There's volatility everywhere, so much uncertainty. Every major corporation is simply relying on the Fed's word. Inflation will stay low and money printing will always increase to make up for the natural deflation that wants to take place. But if there's one thing about a bubble, it always wants to get bigger. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to talk about inflation. We're going to look at food prices. We're going to look at the Federal Reserve. You know, when you were a kid and you had your chewing gum and you were blowing that bubble, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you knew at a certain point that looked like it was going to pop, but you gave it one extra breath and then eventually your face was covered and this is what happens every time did we need to take it that extra breath or could we have simply kept it the way it was no of course not we need to see how it would feel once again to have a whole face full of chewing gum that's what the federal reserve is doing today and i know it's a silly example but that's what i wanted to begin with because we do the same thing over and over again let's go I wanted to begin by taking a look at this before we get into the other information. A massive trade in the US options market on Thursday appears to be betting that the calm enveloping US stocks in recent weeks will give way to a big rise in volatility over the next three months. One or more traders laid out a roughly 40 billion million dollar bet that the cboe vix uh, often called wall street's fear gauge will break above the 25 level and rise towards 40 by mid july now that doesn't mean it's going to happen but certainly there are big bets believing that that's going to be the case and of course that does happen on occasion you do see it spike up but what will it be are they looking at the bond market and the signs that are coming from there it's certainly a possibility Okay, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I love to tell a joke or two. And so this one right here is the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, the core PCE rate. This is basically inflation, the inflation that the Federal Reserve looks at. And I wanted to note this. We have February's numbers now. And this is absolutely hilarious because it actually went down the official rate that the federal reserve looks at and how they tell you that inflation is a problem because it won't go any higher has declined it is now at 1.4 percent 1.4 percent didn't go I, I was expecting it to go to 1.6 1.7 and you know they would just show it like that but I, at this point, I mean, why do they even use this? I mean, it is truly, truly a disservice to every single person who's looking at this and relying on this information in, in one way or another. Global food costs keep climbing in a threat to consumer wallets. This is the big one because especially the people in the bottom 50% get hit the hardest. We've been noticing how bad it's been and it's only the beginning. I'll show you the chart in just a second. UNFAO's food price index rose for a 10th month in March. Vegetable oil prices reached the highest in almost a decade. So it depends on which commodity, but I'll show you the commodity index itself. And look, we are breaking higher and higher. The global food price rally that's stoking inflation worries and hitting consumers around the world shows little signs of slowing. Even with grain prices taking a breather on good crop prospects, the UN gauge of global food costs rose for a 10th month. Last month's advance was driven by a surge in vegetable oils amid stronger demand and tight inventories. Like I said, they're going to blame anything. They're going to say it's because of the supply chain. They're going to say it's because of the problems through 2020 and beyond. They're going to say it's because the sky was blue and the grass was green. It's all going to ignore reality and it's the fact that they've been pumping in money not this year not what they've done this year or even the year before it's what they've been doing for basically over a decade now that's the inflation it's making its way in and we feel it in unfortunate ways here's the chart 
you're looking at higher food bills global food costs are the highest since 2014 if i forward over to trading economics you could see going back this happens to be one particular index um, and i just wanted to show you basically we had this big trend 90s peaking out in 2008 and then of course everything fell down you had uh, oil i think it was 147 dollars a barrel at this point at the peak you had all these different commodities surging up certain companies were performing extremely well particularly in that third stage of the bull market and that's the euphoria stage and then ever since then you know it sort of started to come back up and then it fell down ever since and and you know throughout this period you had oil at $30 a barrel then it was trading around let's say $40 a barrel for a long period of time but now what we can see is that it has broken out of its trend and looks like we don't know it will go much much higher so just imagine oil getting back to not even 147 but maybe it gets back to 100 right now it's at 60 on the wti approximately so it's not that excessive to get back there look at food prices look at all of these different things people cannot afford to buy these there's going to be a lot more stimulus that's needed so that it offsets it but unfortunately when you do the stimulus and they keep telling you that somebody else is going to pay for it look let's be honest you the individual are going to pay and this is one way you're going to pay U.S. property taxes jump most in four years with Sun Belt catching up. U.S. property tax increased at the fastest pace in four years in 2020 with some of the steepest increases coming for in traditionally low-cost Sun Belt states. So you could see the data as it stands right here. And I mean, you can look, depending on, on the, which state, New Jersey, effective tax rate 2.2 percent illinois 2.18 texas 2.15 and so on so you can look through that but the point is they're going up property taxes are going up you rent your land from your landlord that is the government and of course they decide what can and can't happen the property taxes are simply going to increase you know next year property taxes will be higher i can ask you the same question in five years and you will tell me that in fact the property taxes are higher this is the way they continue to move and what do you get out of it less and less it's not higher taxes to get more you could argue that okay well you know what i'm getting better let's say you were getting low quality food and it's whatever that uh you know particular food is and it was two dollars well maybe i'll spend five dollars but i'm gonna get a higher quality food but no it's the same quality food perhaps even less food but you pay even more it's not even the same dollar value anymore you pay more you get less get used to it get used to it you better get used to it this was an article talking about gold, and I wanted to mention it for what's at the top and the bottom here. For investors who are looking for a hedge in their portfolio, commodities in general and gold specifically can be a good play. The goal is to ensure positive long-term performance at a lower level of risk. And that's the whole point. It's not about maximum appreciation. It's not about should I buy gold or should I buy seven shares of Amazon? It's a completely different game, okay? We have to understand how actual diversified portfolio works and that's what they're trying to point out here at the bottom they make an interesting point that i don't think a lot of people realize this gold mutual funds which also invest in gold bullion also often hold interest in companies involved in gold mining that exposes shareholders to equity risk in addition to the intrinsic risk of making bets on gold prices so as you know david morgan says when you look at mining you're not buying metals okay you can actually take advantage potentially you know far surpassing the you know the value and the increase and the appreciation on the metal itself but you have to understand that it's really a stock it's not the metals so that's really the clear distinction in between the two sure 
Either one of them could do very well. Both of them could do very well. But you got to understand the distinction. I told you I would bring you the updates this week on what's happening with the Federal Reserve. Here's another one. Fed's Daily says, must see, not just expect substantial progress on U.S. economy. That's right. We have to be, the, you know, the, the wheels have to be fallen off the car before we're going to say, let's hit the brakes. That's what they're saying here. Think about how you're already over the cliff and now you're going to hit the brakes. That's what they're talking about. That's where they're sending you. They're sending you, they're, they are the crazy bus driver going pedal to the metal right over the cliff. This comes directly from the New York Fed's website, and I wanted to make this known right now. It looks like, anyway, they are going to be printing more money. The Federal Reserve will, in fact, expand their balance sheet even further. So they're saying right here, the introduction of the 20-year Treasury bond has increased amounts outstanding around the 20-year maturity point. In addition, the pace of increase in tips issuance has been slower relative to nominal coupon securities. And they basically go on and say, right here i believe it was as a result we plan to make minor check this out okay the people who have been you know paying attention on this channel since i was talking about the repo crisis uh back well it's almost coming on two years anyway during that period they, they said the same thing minor technical adjustments to our purchase sectors and increase here we go increase the frequency at which we update purchase allocations to remain roughly proportional to the outstanding supply of nominal coupon securities and tips we expect to announce these as part of a normal purchase calendar release in coming months i will translate that into english and uh, i'll do it in this actually or maybe I'll, I'll do a little picture for everybody this is the balance sheet and this is the direction of that balance sheet that's all for this video if you found that informative hit that thumbs up button when you do you are supporting me i want to thank you for that if you have not seen my free e course i highly recommend checking it out you can do that at the amazon gps.com my two books have everything you need related to the financial system central banks talking about interest rates and everything else check them out at the link in the description have you seen this video yet? If not, I highly recommend checking it out. Click it and I'll see you there.